together in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation. For a law will go out from me, and I will set my justice for a light to the peoples. And now, o Lord, for to my wait, for I will Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth in me. Where the heavens vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and they who dwell in it will die in like manner. My salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. Your decrees are very trustworthy. Holiness befits your house, O Lord, forevermore. Be we continue with confession and absolution. Christ is coming again and coming soon. Although we know this, although we've heard his words and warning, we've not always acted as though Christ were coming soon. At times we've grown complacent and lazy, focused on the things of this world rather than on Christ, his word, and his salvation. So as we gather together in the Lord's house, let us consider our failure to live according to his holiness. Heavenly Father, we have we not always said according to your word. We have fallen asleep and conquered our sins. We have not stayed awake and remained prepared for the return of your Son, Jesus Christ. Forgive us for all our sins in God, presented blameless before the presence of God. As a called and ordained servant of Jesus and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. To God be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority, now and forever. We join in reading portions of Psalm 93 responsively. The Lord reigns. He is robed in majesty. The Lord is robed. He has put on strength as his belt. Yes, the world is established. It shall never be moved. Your throne is established from old. You are from everlasting. The floods have lifted up, O Lord, the floods have lifted up their voice. The floods lift up their work. Mighty greater than thunders of many waters, mightier than the waves of the sea, the Lord of God is present. Your decrees are very trustworthy. Holiness because your house, O Lord, forevermore. Glory to the Father. And to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We pray. Lord God, you reign, robed in majesty over all that was, is, and will be. You are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. As we wait for your triumphant return, keep us steadfast in the one true faith and lead us to live lives that reflect your presence so that you may work through us 
as he saved others by snatching them from the fire. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. On this last Sunday in the church year, we turn now to God's Word. Uh, and we have a word from uh, the prophet Isaiah, um, who again called on God's people to, uh, to listen up, to pay attention, uh, and to look and see what's happening around them. The prophet writes, Give attention to me, my people, and give ear to me, my nation. For a law will go out from me, and I will set my justice for a light to the peoples. My righteousness draws near, my salvation has gone out, and my arms will judge the people. The coastlands hope for me, and for my arm they wait. Lift up your eyes to the heavens, and look at the earth beneath. For the heavens vanish like smoke, the earth will wear out like a garment, and they who dwell in it will die in like manner. But my salvation will be forever, and my righteousness will never be dismayed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks. Thanks. And as our second lesson this morning, the epistle for this day, uh, Fortune uh, from the concluding words of uh, one of the smallest books in the New Testament, uh, the letter of Jude. Uh, and he writes, But you, beloved, build yourselves up in your most holy faith. Pray in the Holy Spirit. Keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. And have mercy on those who doubt. Save others by snatching them out of the fire. To others show mercy with fear, taking even the garments stained by the flesh. Now to him who is able to keep you from stumbling and to present you blameless before the presence of his glory with great joy to the only God, our Savior, through Jesus Christ our Lord, be glory, majesty, dominion, and authority before all time and now and forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Rise if able to hear the Holy Gospel for this day from the Gospel according to Mark, the 13th chapter. And Jesus again sounds the warning uh, to be awake, to be alert, to see what lies ahead. The words of Jesus. <clears throat> In those days, after the tribulation, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from heaven. And the powers in the heavens will be shaken, and then they will see the Son of Man coming, clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels, and gather his elect from the four winds, from the ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts out its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these things taking place, you know that he is near at the very gates. Truly I say to you, this generation will not pass away until all these things take place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not 
Christ. But concerning that day or that hour, no one knows, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. Be on guard, keep awake, for you do not know when the time will come. It's like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his servants in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to stay awake. Therefore, stay awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or when the cock crows, or in the morning, lest he come suddenly and find you asleep. What I say to you, I say to all, stay awake. This is the gospel of the we confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He is sent into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, 
We always get ready for that. Now, what would we do if we know Jesus is coming? And he's, he is coming back. We know that for sure. Because that's what the readings today talked to us about, didn't they, that um, Pastor just read to us. It's pretty exciting, and it's going to be a really wonderful day when he does come back for us, because we're going to live with Jesus forever. And you know, Jesus has prepared us for that day by dying on the cross and rising again, and by sending the Holy Spirit so that he can um, plant the faith in our hearts. And now, because we know he's coming, we can do things to prepare ourselves for his coming. And the way we do that is, don't have to really bake a cake, but we're going to come to church, go to Sunday school, read the Bible, pray. All of those things help us prepare for Jesus' coming. And in the epistle lesson today, Jude talked to us about the kinds of things that we do to help others get ready for when Jesus is going to come. And we prepare ourselves, but we also prepare the world, and we do that by sharing Jesus' love with others, by telling them about the love of Jesus, and by telling lots of people that Jesus has died and risen again and will come again for us. And do you know what, Kara? He wants to head back again, okay? <laughs> with that. But we not only prepare ourselves, but we help to prepare the world by sharing Jesus' love with others. Now, sometimes it's really hard work to bake a cake or get ready for a guest. But the nice thing is, is that when the guests arrive, you get to share the cake. And you know, when Jesus comes again, we'll be able to share the greatest gift of all, eternal life with him in heaven. And that's going to be a really cool day. So, thanks for coming up, Ryder, and thanks for joining in, children at home.
Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from Jesus, his Son, who uh, is coming back to gather together his children. Today's uh, the last Sunday of the church here, and there's a, a lot of things from God's Word that are hanging out there for us to have a look at. And uh, we've heard from the prophet Isaiah, we've heard from, from Jude, and we've heard from Jesus himself about things that we should be ready for and alert for. And I'm going to use a, a little bit uh, of the epistle that had served for many years on this last Sunday. It's uh, from the opening chapter of John's Revelation. And it includes words like these uh, for us to consider. It's from the opening uh, greeting of John in his letter. Grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come. Who is, who was, who is to come. And also from the seven spirits who are before his throne. And from Jesus Christ himself, the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, and the ruler of kings on earth. Then to conclude his little greeting, we hear these words from our Lord. I am the Alpha and the Omega says the Lord God, who is, and who was, and who is to come, the Almighty. At the end of the, the psalm that we uh, spoke this morning, we close things off with a little liturgical piece that goes back to the early church, and uh, it's titled in, in Latin, we call it the Gloria Patri, Glory to the Father. And uh, when we speak or chant or sing scripture together, especially the Psalms, we often use this to sort of wrap things up. Uh, and some of us have said it so often that we sort of know it, and if you know this, maybe you can join me in saying this. This is what we say as a little doxology to our God. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be or shall be forever. Okay. That's what we often say as it was, is, and ever shall be. But we go back to the words that John uses to greet the people in his letter. He says, grace and peace to you from him who is, and who was, and who is to come. Did you pick up the difference there in the, the sequence, the temporal sequence? The Gloria Patri says, as it was, it is, and shall be. John says, who is, and who was, and who is to come. What's the difference? Is. Is. The word is. The is. word is. Okay, uh, John starts with what is going on right now. Eh? He says, who is, from who is, and who was. Whereas the, the liturgical phrase starts with what was, and is, and will be. You remember when... Uh, this takes you all the way back to the time of Moses. And you're out there tending the flock of your father-in-law, 
and you're out in the wilderness, and you have an encounter with the God of all creation. God encounters Moses in the wilderness and presents him with a challenge. I want you to go to work for me. I want you to represent me to the children of Israel. And Moses has some doubts. He says, what if, what if uh, they ask me who's, who's talking to them? Who has this message? What am I going to say? And then God says, well, you tell them this. You tell them, I am. That's my name. I am. My name is I am. Or we could say, if we're referring to him in the third person, he is. I am, says God. He is, we say. We often use the word Yahweh as, as the Hebrew or Aramaic version of, of God's name. Old English settled with the word Jehovah. We would call our Lord and God, He is. That's how John starts his greeting and that's the answer that our God gives to Moses. He is the God of the now, of the present moment, of the here and now. He is God right this very minute. And he's here to be with us. Don't you think that's a good thing to know? God is not very far away. God is not some image of your childhood memory. God is right now with us for a reason. He's the God who is. And maybe that's why John makes that point as he puts his greeting to the pen. It's a good thing to know that we have a God of the right now. We have a God of the right now. But he's more than that, as, as we find out, as we speak the liturgies of the church and as we listen to the words of, of his prophets. Our God's got a history. He's done things before. He has a history of giving life and he has a history of caring and nurturing and sustaining and loving and forgiving and it's all a part of who he was. So we have a God who is, who was, and I think John would want us to know that he's not done yet. That there's more to come. And so he can say in his greeting, who is to come? He is, he was, and he is to come. He's not confined uh, to history books. He will continue to guide and keep us as we move together into the future, into the unknown, into the uncertain, into the tenuous. And he will accompany us through all those uncertainties that still await us. One thing we've learned through the pandemic is that we don't know a whole lot about what's ahead and what shape the future will take. And maybe John can affirm in our hearts this day 
that God's there for us. As he has been in the past, as he is right this very moment, he will continue to be there. To guide, to keep, and to move into a future that may be uncertain, but he is there in the midst of us. Included in this little introductory song of praise in the book of Revelation, in the very